What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of Just Saying I have no idea what to say anymore But we will be talking about Hi guys, welcome back to hey. another episode of Just Saying Correct, Today. what are we going to talk about? Interranger Interranger <laughs> relationship yeah. Like right. yellow, black, blue or brown Blue colour! Or purple! But to be honest, right, guys of the same race can have different colour of Yeah, that's true. I've yeah. seen oh, some like Chinese. Wait, 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 I've only been in interracial relationship. I really want to date like an abang, but I can never find like the right abang. Yeah. Unless you have like oh. nice broad shoulders and he's very tall and he's like, eh. Hey. Like Aaron Aziz. Yes. 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 You know, like Aaron Aziz. Aaron Aziz. Aziz. Taufik Batisa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Abang jual property. Yeah. Abang jual chicken wing. Yeah. So, so you've been into interracial Yes, I've been what, in what interracial race? Indian, white. White, 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 white. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you right. only date white people lah usually. So far, but I really just want an abang. I can't find one. Maybe you need a westernized abang. No, I want like abang abang that will like come to my abang? house for like Ramadan. Oh. You know. Oh. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, I brought you like sayur lodeh. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents want you to date a so nice the, Arab boy. No, the good thing about my parents is with all my siblings, we always date like kind of out of like the race <clears> or religion. Okay. Doesn't matter. What matters is the person. Like that's how my parents brought us up. Because I do know some of my relatives who are quite adamant about like, oh, I need to marry an Arab. Like they're not imposing on us. Yeah. They're kind of less just like, oh, this is my decision and like this is what I want. But I feel like for me, my family never grew up that way. So that's why we were just like, Hey, open to the world. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like you have to put on a certain front when you date them? No, not at all. I think that's the reason why I connect with them because I find similarities with them. And even when there are differences, it's fun like learning about like your differences. Um, but it's always like you have to keep repeating. Not really. Who are you going out I with? I don't know. As in, like, because like white guy, white guy, white guy. So like you teach this guy a culture already, and then you break up with him, and then this guy don't know anything about the Malay I culture. I think as long as they want to learn, right? Yes. And it's yeah, not about it's teaching okay. culture. It's also teaching them about yourself. So yeah. every time you meet someone new, so they learn again about yourself. What you tell the Different same stories about yourself. Of your mm. body. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what will make you go? Ayah, you don't understand. I know, I can I can pinpoint it. But really? I guess like based on like my own though. my own experience. Like they have like a yellow fetish. Mm. So like they oh, fetish like that, they yeah. fetish size. But they don't really like take initiative to like learn about like your culture. Yeah, that's like a no for me. But yeah. yeah. if it's like in bit when they call me like you're my little geisha or something. Oh, oh my god! You are not Japanese. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. And then there's like a lot of like trigger phases that I know like it's gonna come up. Cause there was this period of time where like I was I dated a Chinese guy and then after we broke up, I just wanted to like experience the rest of the world and you know, <laughs> some cultural flavor, right? <laughs> <laughs> my life. So I started going with a whole bunch of guys. I noticed that a few trigger things that I really hate. So yeah, the geisha one or like equating me as any sort of like you know like Barbie or like Chun Li like kind of mm. right, right. Like you know if you tie your hair up in a ponytail, they'll be like you look like Chun Li, and I'm oh like there's more Chinese people than Chun Li. <laughs> and then Mulan, like, Mulan. Yeah, or they expect you to be very timid and mild because it's yeah. like Asian stereotype. Yeah, you know, which I really that's hate. true. Yeah. My boyfriend is British. We've been together for quite some time and he hangs out with a lot of my Singaporean friends. He like learns a lot about Singapore. At the same time, I also learn a lot about UK and learn a lot yeah. about like the music and like things that British people do. So if you make tea, you have to soak the tea bag for three minutes first and then you can add in the milk. If not, it's like a sin. Oh, wow. Yeah, every Cheap Sunday, breakfast. you must have Sunday rose. Rose. Yeah. Yeah. rose. rose. Like rose is like what my mom made for Christmas, but with more stuff like potatoes and vegetables and mass. 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 Yes, Yorkshire mass. pudding. It's just a British culture. Yeah, and, so good. and like certain things like British people say, you will never understand if you don't live in UK. Like yeah. the slang is very like, like off the chain. So that's why actually there are quite a lot of similarities. Because like when I talk in Singlish, he won't really understand. But once I explain it, it's like, oh actually like in UK, we have like the similar mm. version, but in our own way. Mm. So it's quite interesting, like you get to learn a lot about different people mm -hmm. and like, yeah. y'all can bitch about the culture together also, which is nice. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. true. You and you eh? Most of my exes were Chinese and like, I'm partially Chinese. But the problem is I don't speak Mandarin. I'm not very close oh to that culture because I never grew up there. How are you gonna impress the mother? Yeah, so it was very difficult like with my ex-boyfriend's family. Like they were very traditional Chinese. 
like every time I'll sit for dinner, right? They'll just speak in Mandarin, even though they know I don't speak Mandarin. Oh yeah, that's that's bad. And yeah, that's bad. I always feel like secretly they just want him to date yeah, a Chinese girl, probably. and I always felt like an outcast. Yeah, for yeah. me also, like it was a bit hard, like during dinner time. I'm not very used to the food. Oh, like, but Chinese food is great. Yeah. No, but it's yeah. very like backstory. I grew up like half Muslim also, because mm. my grandma's Muslim, so like I didn't really grow up eating a lot of pork. So like, oh, they cook pork. Yeah, they cook a lot of pork, like pigs here and stuff. Wait, like, this is knowing that you grew up half Muslim. Yeah, but then I was agnostic. So you told them that you don't mind. Yeah, so yeah. I don't mind it. It's just that when I like tried it, yes. like it's just cannot like I just found it very difficult. But I didn't want to be rude at the dining table also. Yeah, so that was like one thing about being in an interracial marriage. Like I guess shit, babe. You tak tahu it. You say marriage. Oh marriage, <laughs> sorry. Slowly, slowly. slowly. Most of my relationships are interracial. I dated mostly Chinese girls. Mm. It's very touchy when it comes to things like dinner mm. and culture and everything. Because like for example, like Chinese culture you eat. Uh, Bowl. Yeah, and then you use chopsticks. I realized that sometimes if you ask for spoon, then they will look at you like. But your Malay, they should give you face. Yeah, but then I think to that is because I'm entering their house. But as a okay, guest, in Singapore, but as a yeah. host, you want your guests to be comfortable, right? Like I, I, would, I would think so. I would think so, so it's like, a big yeah. deal, yeah. Like, I would yeah, think yeah, it's a big yeah, deal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's very touchy with like culture. For example, like Chinese New Year is very big to them, but mm. to you, it's just like another oh, day. Another one, like okay, I go with you, mm. but there are certain things that you need to kind of obey. Yeah. There was this girl I that she would ask their parents for. Oh, is it? I've yeah, I've never, I've never heard of that. That maybe is that adopted from Malay culture, like Peranakan. Like uh, for yeah, us, it's like giving home pals like happy. Yeah, I remember yeah. like queuing up. So my grandma was Chinese, and she would make us all queue up to like collect ampau and jewelry. Wait, yeah. the jewelry? I don't know, but I never said no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but mostly they always judge all the stereotypes. Like they will always ask, like, what do I do? What right, school right. do I go to? Yeah. And this always comes for the Chinese family. Yeah, like, it's what school very you go normal. To? Normal type or normal? Okay, after that, go where? Now you do what? Even... Yeah, like they will ask a lot of questions as if like I'm not up to standard to date their Chinese doctor. To be fair, I feel a lot of Chinese families are like that because I have a really good friend. Um, she's Indian and she mm. also date a lot of Chinese guys. Like the guys in the family always are like, oh, you're really pretty for an Indian girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or like sometimes at dinner table, they will say like, Hey, Malay people eat this nah. That was just like, hey, chill auntie, like, you know, I'll just, I'll just eat whatever the f*** <laughs> you eat. Like, I know how to use chopstick. Malay people eat something. But sometimes with that generation also, yeah. it comes from a good place. It's yeah, just, they like, want to understand. Because yeah. like, my boyfriend's parents are always asking me like, do you eat this, do you eat mm. this? Mm. But like, I always eat lah. But like sometimes, like when Kishaw say the thing about pigs, yeah. Mm. Because mm. right, the first time I received I pork trotters, I had yeah. wanted to vomit. And then when I found out it came from a can, I was like, "Nice from a can." Yeah, pork trotters come from a can. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and I was like, the pig didn't even die this year, dude. But then okay. I tried it and I love it. But I get it. The first reaction is like, Ugh. like jellyfish. I was like, won't it kill oh, me? I'm just curious because like like you're mixed and then like your boyfriend is Chinese, so like Chinese. Chinese Chinese. Chinese Chinese Like how do you incorporate your culture to like his? Like do you guys ever fight about like Okay so my mom raised us on this like sort of I don't want to say bastardized version of Chinese culture <laughs> But it was She didn't really know what she was doing She just knew she was supposed to do it mm. So like coming into it I was like sort of almost like blank mm. Only that my grandma really wants me to date a Jewish man She's always like you know oh, There's this new boy Why is Jewish? Because she's Jewish, Jewish. Oh, okay. she's Jewish. Okay. But she's Why is he cynical? You know he's a doctor I know he's a lawyer so I'm like, I'm not interested in grandma thing. <laughs> <laughs> so a friend of mine, he's Malay and his wife now is Chinese and their wedding was the perfect assimilation of the Malay and Chinese culture together because the decor, everything, sponsored the food, everything Kaffee was Malay. Yes, yeah, sponsored by Kaffee Kaffee. Kaffee. <laughs> But then they had like a lion dance, they had a dragon dance. So it was really nice to see like both families come together because you could see like even during the like meetings for the weddings, right? Both mm. families were like literally trying to learn more about each other. Mm. Really sponsored by Kaffee Kaffee, yeah. that wedding. Yeah. I feel like the point of contention with like interracial relationships, a lot of it is like religion. Yeah. Especially yeah. with families that are like deeply religious. Mm. It becomes yeah. very, very difficult. Oh. The religion part I always don't touch. For example, like I mean, I've been to church a lot with my ex-girlfriend because that's mm. very important to your family. And whenever they ask me, I don't want to reject. I mean, they are they were very staunch Christians, mm. and I mostly just, just don't work out lah. So and you would have to convert in order. If I want to, to marry her lah, yeah. But her. then again, my religion I cannot convert out lah. When it comes to this type of stuff, I always just go with the flow because yeah. I know even though I go to church, I'm not gonna pray to whoever they are praying to. I'll just be there out of respect because it's very important to their family lah. So that's one advice when you go into inter racial relationships right you should go in with an open mind because yeah, yeah, you know yeah. for a fact that you dated someone who's of a different race and mm. a different religion you have to accept a lot of different things lah 
definitely if you want to even make that first step you really have to be prepared like I have to compromise yeah. and I'm not gonna get my way Yeah. because yeah. if you go in thinking you're gonna get your way like you're gonna be very disappointed yeah. Yeah. so like with my ex girlfriend right we actually did talk about marriage and then we were talking about kids right? like any other couples would do and then she mentioned like oh if we had married and have kids the kids have to go to church every Sunday that got me a bit ticked off I was like why don't you give them a choice and this is my belief like I do believe in a higher being I feel like the house needs to have one higher being so that if the kids are not scared of me, they were scared of someone. Yeah. <laughs> but then I feel like it should give them a choice to choose. Yeah. And I feel like each parent shouldn't force to just say, oh, this is where I come from. This is where your mom came from. You can go and both go and Google it and then see where we show you the goal. I feel like you go any direction, okay. La. And but it's confusing for the child because I was like that. Yeah, so gave me, like, how, how would you teach them? Would you send them for like classes like madrasa? Would no, she I, I think if I practice it well, they can come with me. I would force them. Okay, right, like, oh, right, maybe right. I'll go more and see what it's like. Yeah, you don't think okay, the kids will see that. So, yeah, I actually yeah. had a same the same situation. That's why you're describing <laughs> when my mom goes to church and then my dad goes to synagogue. And so sometimes we just go to synagogue and sometimes we just go to church. Mm-hmm. And then we all find our own way back to God. And like, mm-hmm. it was our own choice. Even though mm-hmm. we were in a Christian school, pray three times a day, it, it still worked out in the yeah. end. So I think it's the way that the parents yeah. navigate it. And I think the most important thing is to not fight over it. And not to turn religion into something that your child doesn't want to mm-hmm. yeah. 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 cut yeah, off. For sure. Because whenever they think of like church, they're like, I'm letting this parent down. Mm. And whenever they yes, think about the other, guilty. yeah, you feel very guilty. But I think when you like meet someone and they're of a different mm-hmm. religion, mm-hmm. if they are very staunch, like they cannot compromise at all and you are not willing to compromise 100%, right? Mm. Then there's something you should walk away from. The bigger problem is not religion. The biggest problem is that there's no compromise. Yes. So we come to the end of this episode. Oh, you guys liked it. If you guys have anything you like us to talk about, do let us know in the comment section below. Mm-hmm. If not, bye. bye. bye.